Yo, yo, you can hear me all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's crispy. Oh, Maybe baby. I need to turn it down a little bit. Cool. Beautiful. So, let's go, baby. The ripple effect. Mm, you What's talk it? for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, for me, man, I, I can see that this this whole space that we've jumped into is just meant for us. You know, I, I can already feel it. I can see it. It's, I can feel us embodying it very quickly. Yeah. Because I find from what, I remember that that older gentleman that you met at uh, Espen's. Dave. Dave, when he said it's our responsibility to be that change. Yeah. That hit and that stuck. So I actually find that that is now one of my non-negotiables yeah. if I ever have days where I can't be bothered or I make up excuses whatever it might be I'm not hard on myself but I think back to that comment yeah. and I'm like man this I'm on this purpose in this journey for a reason it is my responsibility I get to do this but also I must do this to be that change yeah. well it's like we are here to be the change. That's the thing. Like that's where the ripple effect started is we were at Espen's event and the three of us were chatting and we were going through our breakthroughs and you brought up that, you know, rip, the ripple effect and it stuck. And then from there, it's it became like the trio of us. That's what we, you know, we'd speak to ourselves as. And through that time and having the conversation with Dave Bellamy, a wise elder to us and him having this conversation with me down at the riverbank and saying that you young men are incredible you're in this space doing this work for a reason and I said yes it's a blessing and an opportunity and he said it's not it's beyond that it can be a blessing and an opportunity but it is a responsibility for you young men doing the work to get this out to the world. And that's where this started. That's where our purpose and our passion has launched from in this, that we come around and, and the, the most beautiful thing to me with the ripple effect is the fact that my background was brought up with two sisters and a mum. Dad was away working a lot and I was told treat women as goddesses. Treat them and treat any woman like you would want to see your, your sister treated. And that's what I've looked to embody, always treat women well. And I've been the intellectual. So in the ripple effect, we have the earth, we have the fire, we have the wind. In that way, I'm the, the wind is is my element of the four. And there's that, that informational side of it or that scientific side of it you could explain. And the most incredible thing to me is the fact that we have three such different energies. You yourself, Trav, as the earth. You were the big dog football player that everyone was scared of, but you have this presence about you that is so open and that is so with people that people are just drawn to you because they know that they are heard and they are felt and that they are seen by you when they're expressing. They're not expressing to someone ready to respond. They're expressing to someone who's hearing them and feeling them. And that is a gift. And you have that energy. And then there's Rip. And Rip's like our firecracker. <laughs> There's, it's, it's remarkable, that, but this is what I mean. I'm so proud of both of you because you've been, you know, I've been on this journey for a bunch of years now, many years, and to see the transformation has been incredible. And, and Rip's background, as an example, he was the guy that was picking up loads of chicks back in the day. That was his thing. He was known for his background in being the stripper and picking up women. And through the experience at Espen's, his heart opening, he's like, I don't want to be that guy anymore. I do not. I've seen what I've done. I've felt what I've done. I've seen the pain. And the beautiful thing is one of the leaders that we have at the Ripple Effect event, he went through that transformation with Chrissy. And he was able to see what men have done to her and how much pain that's caused. And that was the impact for him. And the shift that he has had since that weekend, he's been in any way he can holding a safe space for the women of the world. And I say the woman of the world as plural woman in that, that energetic experience. And knowing that us three coming together, we, well, at least for me, I know that our energies are so diverse and different and that's why people are pulled to us because you're that earth rips that fire and I'm that wind and we come together in this like culmination that's just it's like to me it's it's like perfection it's incredible because 
it, as we've spoken about, I know you guys joke and say I'm like Master Splinter, that, that <laughs> wisdom, but that's what happens. He's like, we'll be going through something and then I'll question you boys and that's that intellect. But then Rip will come back with fire and you'll reground us. And it's just this flow. And we've had so many people reaching out to each of us individually. Again, different energies. Those that are wanting that, like that present safe space, reaching out to you. Those with that more fiery energy, reaching out to Rip. And those on the intellect, reaching out to me. And they've obviously been speaking amongst us all, but people going, how do we get involved? How can we be around your energy? How can we be around the three of you? You're fucking incredible. And that's how it started was, you know, like, okay, well, we feel that there is a massive, massive challenge in the world at the moment that there are so many, and we've, we've seen this firsthand at events and experiences all together, that there are so many women that lack trust in men in the world because of the trauma or the abuse or the conditioning that they've been through. And that is not to say that there aren't men that are out there that haven't been through it too. I have personally been through sexual abuse attempts by women. And that's why I say it is not one-sided at all, but the number is incredible. Mm. The, when you go to an event, let's say there's a hundred women, 99 of them, pretty much in that number, that, that level, almost everyone has been through that. And that there's there's conditioning and pain and trauma and triggers from that and they can't in that i shouldn't say they can't at that point they don't have the capacity to open up and to fully surrender they're living life and this is the same for many men on like a continuum of of if we think of like minus 10 to zero to plus 10 they're living from like minus one to plus one because that's their emotional capacity and their ability to tap into their masculine and feminine energy because it's been so suppressed and repressed and pushed down and held back so that we don't have to go through more pain. And for us, us three, we've gone, this needs to stop. Like this of the men needs to fucking stop. And then for the women, we need to help. And that's where this, you know, the events that have come together, us doing breath work and ice baths and connections at my place and at Rip's place and just holding that safe space for, let's say, 18 to 20 women amongst us, three or four men. It's been so powerfully healing for all of those women. And they leave going, oh my God, I can trust men now. Like, I know that there are men out there that might look tatted up. They might look big and like big islanders and, you know, whatever it is, I can trust them. They're not all bad. And that is huge because it enables them to open up that bit more. And that's where the ripple effect, the event that we've created has stemmed from. And I say this with grace and with love. I've been to a lot of events, a lot of programs, to a lot of coaching over the last 10 years. And I've never been as excited as I am about the ripple effect event that we are hosting, launching, facilitating in Dadilabar on Saturday, the 4th of December. Why? Because... What we have experienced and seen and gone through and the people reaching out to us, we've gone, there's only three of us. We have so many people reaching out to want to experience these things. How the fuck can we help everyone? We we don't have that. And this is, as we said with Dave, this is not just an opportunity and a blessing. This is our fucking responsibility as young men to be the change that we wish to see in the world. We wish to see more open, more vulnerable, more surrendered and truly divinely feminine women of the world in their flow and in their true essence, living life fully. And we want to see men in their divine masculine, driving, opening the world, penetrating the world fully with their power, their might, their strength, their resilience, but being also able to flip into the opposite energies because male and female are sexes or genders. Masculine and feminine are energies. The masculine is structure, discipline, force, analysis, thinking. The feminine is the opposite. It's like flow, it's freedom, it's wild, it's creative, it's feeling. We all have a composition, a matrix of both. Men have masculine and feminine energy. Women have feminine and masculine energy. Typically, men are 80% masculine, 20% feminine. And women are typically 80% feminine, 20% masculine. Now that varies. Obviously, there's some people that are neutral, which we'd say is a 50-50, and some people are flips, but it's a very small portion. Mm. And we obviously also tap into our different energies as male and female in different situations. But this is the thing. If you've only got the plus one to minus one on the continuum, you're missing out all the way to the tens. You can't, you don't have the capacity as a woman to tap into 
that strong masculine presence or that that power when a man is coming at you in, in the wrong way and they go back in de- down into freeze response in the nervous system and that's traumatic and then in the same way why are suicide rates so fucking high for men because they feel like they've got to hide their emotions suppress their emotions and it's not that at all it's they need to be able to express them because what is held in is compressed and what is expressed is let out and so think about it as basically all of the negative emotions that they're holding in is what they're holding and having to deal with every day but when you let it out when they say get it off your chest they feel so light it's because that actually happens and that is one of the biggest ways we can heal in that space not just for women with trauma but for men with suicide as well and this is where as i said there's the three of us and we've literally come together and said how the fuck do we take this responsibility and serve the whole world as three people as three young men that want this for the world and that's when we realized we don't have that capacity we want to serve in the greatest way how okay us three reach 20 people reach 50 people reach 100 people now those 100 people reach 10 more and that's a thousand people impacted and that's where this the principle the intention behind the ripple effect came together was the fact that we were like okay if we can give the tools and enable the men to fully embody their masculine their divine masculine power their freedom their strength their competitive side their resilience and that part that turns the woman on how do we get that to the men and also enable them to uncover their feminine give them a safe space where we can go we're going to ask you some challenging questions right now we're going to talk about some vulnerable shit that you don't ever want to talk about but you're going to lean into it because it is going to free you, to lighten you, and you are here to be courageous. And they experience that, and then they realize, holy shit, I can actually do this. I can open this up. I can lean into that. And they feel so free and empowered. And this is the only way I can express my experience since my near-death experience, is that I've been forced into my feminine because I was only ever masculine. And now that I know the light and the dark, I can pull into whichever I need to. I can go into that powerful masculine when I need to hold the space in a room or control an environment. And I can go into full feminine surrender when I need to speak and hold a safe space, a container, or to express emotion consciously. And it is the most freeing, liberating experience. And in the same way for the woman, we want the woman to be able to feel safe, to feel held, to know that they can trust men there isn't an ulterior motive that there isn't an intention for getting or taking what if these men and more men of the world could just give and the women be able to know that wow these men that look tough and look scary they're insecure as well they struggle with self-worth as well they struggle with self-love as well a lot of the times they question themselves and doubt themselves and hate themselves They don't have that love for themselves. And when the women can see that, they can see that men aren't perfect because that's the thing. A lot of women look at men as these big, powerful forces. And that's where a lot of that, the challenge comes in. What do men want from me? What are they going to do to get it? It's like, what happens if these men don't want? What happens if all they want is to serve and for you to feel safe and to go, there's nothing coming from me. I'm just here to love unconditionally with no intention. And when the women can see that of the men, that is healing in and of itself. But then they also get to go into there and uncover their masculine power, their masculine strength, so that they can be full in that presence in themselves and intimidate a man with their presence. Literally, we've worked on that in the activities we've set out. How do we enable women to be intimidating? And I mean intimidating for that reason, not in the way of scaring men off on on purpose in every day but if a man is coming from the wrong place and they want to hold strong in their own so that man will back off and he's not overpowering them they can and they don't need to use physicality it's solely how they feel in themselves and how they hold themselves to have that then also for so much of the women of society they are in that without knowing they're masculine and so we want to be able to and we will be enabling them to drop into their feminine to soften to experience what they've always had within them. And I just know 
from the bottom of my heart that I've experienced masculine and feminine exercises and activities and other events and programs and seminars and courses and experiences. I've never been as excited about something as I am for this because I know that the way that we have developed the flow of this immersion, the way that the container is created, the intention of vulnerability, of openness, of growth, of the men holding the women and the women holding the men is going to be so fucking transformative. And I know that every single one of the 100 people that are there, that attend, in the space of our 10 incredible facilitators that we have. So not only is there myself, you, Trav, and Rip, but we also have seven other incredible facilitators, two other men joining us, Jay Godfrey from Impact Media down on the Gold Coast, and Jacob Major, the lead facilitator for Cool To Be Conscious on the, the Goldie. Coming up, we have Chrissy Jewell, an incredible embodied woman. We have Beck Hannon coming through from the Gold Coast as well. We have Danielle Reed. We have Elise Riley. We have Ash Pierce. <sighs> What a crew, man. <laughs> the, the embodiment. But wow. that's the thing is yeah. we've said specifically, and I've said to you boys, we will not run this event if we do not have facilitators that are embodied. Mm. Because there are a lot of women that talk about the work and there are a lot of men that say, yeah, I, you know, I do this and I do that. I always look at how much do they embody? How much do they live it? When a man says, I hold a safe space and I love always, do they? Do they actually live it? Or how much do you see the negativity from their words or the comparison or the ego judgment? And for the women, when they say that all this stuff about the feminine, if I said, okay, show me your flow, open that up, are they comfortable to do that? And that's why we've been so specific with the facilitators that we've selected to join us, to stand alongside us, to hold this space and this container that I know every single person, the 100 attendees, 50 men and 50 women, because we want that equal portion that equal energy and the 10 facilitators we are all going to leave this day transformed because there's no way we can't with the way that this has been developed created and will be held the flow of it all and the intention behind it it is you could feel it oh man that day when we went there and we were going through the flow of it and looking where the events were going to take, take place how it was all going to look I could feel something. You know, it, it just even the fact I looked at it, the fact that those football posts were there, it was very symbolic for myself. Someone mentioned the other day, Merv said, "Was it crazy to see how far you've come? The fact you're about to host an event on a place where you have felt so much pain, yeah. you're about to heal so much pain." Yeah. That was powerful when he said that. I was like, man, I teared up a little bit hearing that because I was like, yeah, it really is the that's very polarizing for me personally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just figured I'd mention that too. Oh, and the way you're going to show up on the day, mm. what we've already been through, just... If, if you are watching this video and you're watching right now and you're still with us, thank you. And I, I, I don't urge you, I don't force you, I will not push you. I invite you and I welcome you to step up for yourself to get yourself a ticket. This for us is not about financial return. We've made that very clear from the beginning as everything we've discussed. This is about us impacting, having the ripple effect, having that experience where we impact 100 lives. Those 100 lives impact 50 others in their community or in their energy or in their expression. That's 5,000 lives that have been impacted from the three of us to begin with. And that's what we mean by the ripple effect because on those 5,000 will impact, let's say, 10 each. That's 50,000. And that's exactly what we're talking about with creating this ecosystem where it's not about us. This is the ripple effect. And that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing because we have a responsibility as young men and young women doing the work to serve the world, to get this out to others, to heal and to transform so that people can live their fullest, truest life. That is exactly what our intention is for this event, to create freedom, liberation, and transformation. Mm. Nailed it. <laughs> Man.